Lucia was uh, placed under house arrest in 2010. She's a Chinese artist and poet. Um, she doesn't write in an overtly political way, but uh, her husband, uh, Liu Xiaobo, uh, was awarded uh, the Nobel Peace Prize also in 2010. And following that, she was placed under house arrest. Um, he is in prison. Um, so it's been difficult for me to communicate uh, with her. Her communication is, is blocked and monitored. Um, so I only had her writing to, to go through. And I've picked a poem of hers called Black Sail, which I'm going to read first. And then I'll read the poem uh, that I wrote in response to it. Um, trying to find a sort of point um, of commonality between us. And this is really about the sea. I do a lot of um, swimming in the sea and writing about that. Um, so having read this poem, I then went out and did a swim um, in the sea and wrote about that. Um, so Lucia's poem is called Black Sail, and mine is called Swim, Swan, Song, Three Movements for Lucia, which I'll go into afterwards. This is Black Sail. The red-faced man goes fishing and catches your favourite fish, a black fish. A fish who knows your thoughts. Your heart splits in pain and your teeth clench. Dejected, you stroke the sea. And where your hand touches, fish jump up. So many fish. So many fish seduce the red-faced man to hoist the sail and set out to sea for the night, forgetting it's dark. One may get lost. You reach out your arms and pull the red-faced man close, his hair floating like green seaweed, and then you calm down and you light a cigarette. Green smoke rises. The next day, when firecrackers clear the way for the full black sail, you become a gust of wind, a cloud, an eye. The woman who loses the man loses her breast milk overnight. You appear in the dreams of that thirsty child, often, telling him his father is happy in the sea, and he is happy. The child becomes a man keeping silent all day long. He remembers everything but says nothing. The woman's tide ebbs in the distance, and the green seaweed moves with each wave. First, the white new paper, the opening of a door, the house creaks with leftover rain. Second, the cracks of winter water. I have come, I have come with nothing, soon I'll take back on, fearing not just the act, but the surveillance of the act. We strongly advise that you do not swim in the sea. Stroking the sea, all foam it swirls. I take my coat off and walk slowly in. People gather at the railings. Is your father in the sea? Is your father in the sea? Is he happy? In the sea. Is your father happy? In the sea. He is happy. Third, for Lucia. I say your name as I walk deeply in. I say your name so I don't think about the cold or the people watching from the railings, so I don't think about whether I can. Into the gold, the cold waves breaching. Water wills you in and on, in and on, glistening in the water's song, glistening, glistening. Water wills you in and on, in and on, iced peaks stiff yet yielding, as meringues glistening, smooth against the skin, willing you in and on, in 
and ones happy and ones happy and ones until you are gone or a drift of bones. Now you are fighting, but you're happy in the sea. You are happy to have won. This time you have won, and your foot east to China finds the ground you have come away from. And the tide comes at you at an angle from the swelling seas, East China, Philippines, Indian, Atlantic Channel. You turn again and again, you rise and meet it, and for a second it lifts you. I leave two shelves on the shore, matching and small, both the size of the fingernails. I write for Lucia on one, for Lucia Beau on the other, and they disappear until you look directly at them, and their writing shines up at you in surprise. <laughs>